Hello and welcome to the Performance Days Expert Talks, this time in online version. My name is Jan Behringer from, uh, from Hohenstein and I have the honor to present to you our approach to how to green your fibers and treatments. Well, basically the uh, customer and your consumer gets more and more educated, so they are demanding green materials. And uh, for you as a company, this basically means you need, uh, you need to have something uh, done already for claiming responsible sourcing, um, safe chemistry and safe materials, uh, that you have taken care of the product and the consumer safety during the use and of course also the end of life. So basically what happens with the footprint uh, when the textile is disposed. So, well, how to address these requirements with credibility over the whole product life cycle and not only focusing on picking a sole green material for the product. So this is what the presentation is about the next 20 minutes. Well, first of all, uh, the Ecotex uh, system has been, uh, let's say, a precursor for green chemistry and green textiles since the late 1990s. So actually, this is a perfect tool to communicate this to your customer. The Ecotex concept basically consists out of input control, process control and product control. And what is very neat is, for example, the uh, Eco Passport at the very beginning of the textile chain for managing your textile chemicals. Uh, the process control in Ecotex step is basically also very viable to communicate your sustainability in production. And uh, as you all know, the, uh, communi the communication at the uh, product level, so at the end of the textile chain with uh, the Ecotex stand 100, which is well known, um, the relatively new Ecotex made in green, and last but not least, the Ecotex leather standard. So, focusing a little bit more in, on the input control, this would be the EcoPass port uh, from Ecotex. Well, it's basically combining input stream chemical management with product safety and regulatory compliance, meaning that if a textile chemical is EcoPass port certified, you have done the job, you basically comply with all regulatory uh, requirements. And uh, it's a perfect independent tool for rate chemicals through a transparent evaluation process to eliminate the chemicals and substances of high concern out of the textile product and the textile chemistry product. Well, and um, bottom line, to make sure that the chemicals used are as green as chemicals can be. Um, this is not only for uh, textile chemicals, but this is also applicable to leather chemicals. Um, the process control and verification with uh, STEP by uh, Ecotex, well, it's an independent certification for environmentally friendly and socially responsible reduction in your facilities. And again, this is also along the whole textile and leather chain. So it's wet processing, but also cut and sew. It allows you basically to document that you are committed to sustainable uh, to sustainability by way of an assessment, a company audit is included, and what you get at the very end is a final rating so that you can actually compare um, your uh, suppliers in a ranking, so which supplier is more sustainable. Well, the well-known output control with the Standard 100 by Ecotex, it's the well-known communication of product and consumer safety at the point of sale. Uh, based on independent testing and certification for textiles and uh, tested for harmful substances. It's a comparable product safety through worldwide legal con conformity and it's flexible and up-to-date. So the standard is um, adapted every year to comply with the most recent regulatory requirements. So the RSL is adapted to the new requirements and production methods and on a regular basis. The output control by Made in Green, well, Made in Green is basically the new, um, some of you may know that the Ecotex Standard 1000 was once existing and this is the new version of the Ecotex Standard 1000. It's basically if you have um, uh, a STEP certified facility that produces your products and your product is Ecotex Standard 100 or and or leather standard certified, you can basically obtain the Made in Green label. So it's production and product to communicate um, to your consumer. Um, the label can be awarded to any kind of textile and leather product, basically anywhere in the world and at any stage of the textile supply chain. And the, the label products can be easily traced 
um, or there's a barcode on the um, uh, textile label, a QR code, which actually shows you the origin uh, and the supply chain of the product. And this offers the consumer as well as your business partners new levels of transparency of your supply chain. All right, so this was the production of your product uh, when you bring it to the market. But of course, we think it's also um, required that you take um, action and responsibility in terms of use and care. And the topic which is uh, really on right now is microplastics and microfibers. So I think you're pretty well aware with uh, the problem. So you use the textiles, you wash the textile in the washing process, uh, microparticles, fibers, and plastics are generated, and these are entering basically over the wastewater streams, um, the environment, and enter into the food chain, and later basically end up with a human being. So um, the fiber discharge during washing can be seen in a very rough experiment. So this is what we conducted. This is the image on the lower left. This is basically the residue of, um, of a wash water. And the image on the left side is part of the wastewater treatment of an industrial facility that processes medical scrubs. So this is the residue of one day of medical scrub washing. Uh, well, microfibers, microparticles, microplastics, of course, for microfibers, there's a textile definition, but this is often mixed at the moment right now. So actually, what is really microplastics? And the most cited definition is that everything below five millimeters of diameter and length uh, is considered as a microplastic. So when you take a closer look at the wastewater samples that uh, you can collect after washing a textile, you find fibers with different colors, you find uh, particles of different sizes and diameters. If you have blended fabrics or cotton polyester, for example, you find polyester uh, fragments and also cotton fragments. And uh, last but not least, you do also find contaminations in the textile product because the textile product is not produced in a clean room environment. So basically all the um, debris that is collected during the whole textile production chain is later on on your textile and is shed in the very first washing process. Also, um, it, is, um, uh, it was well discovered in our research activities that uh, there's a certain ratio between a particle and a fiber that is, shedded, uh, that is shed during the washing process. So what we found in our research activities that roughly 90% of what you collect in a filtration is actually particle nature, so it's not fiber nature, and only roughly about 10 to 5% is actually of fiber nature, which means that if you're looking for microfibers um, in your wash water, you actually, and you filter only the wash water, you actually get 90% wrong numbers. So this is very important if you want to do product development and really look into the product if it has improved in terms of microfiber or microplastic shedding during the washing process. A chemical fiber identification can be done by um, a chemical treatment. So if you have, for example, cotton polyester fibers, so the cotton content or in general the whole cellulosic content can be dissolved by a sulfuric acid treatment and this gives you the ability to distinguish between uh, polyester fibers that are shed during the washing and cotton fibers that are shed during the washing process. So the tool that we use, uh, which is much more powerful than just a simple filtration um, of, uh, of the wash water, is we call it dynamic image analysis. So uh, to be straight to the very bottom, it's basically taking a picture uh, of every fiber and particle that is found in the wash water. And the software is basically counting these fibers and uh, taking the measurements at those fiber particles. So these are the images, or these are, this is basically the data that comes out of the testing, the images on the right side of the slide. It's a size distribution, diameter distribution, and for every particle of fiber, there's an image available. So for a whole analytical run, um, we take about 10,000 images. Of course, it's not manually, it's all automatic. Um, a very cool thing about this dynamic image analysis, you don't need to have uh, crystal clear wastewater. It also works in turbid and colored liquids. The only requirement is that there is, needs to be a certain contrast between the liquid and the fiber. So basically, if you measure white fibers in a crystal clear solution, it struggles a little bit, but this can also be very easily overcome by just dyeing or add a little dye stuff into the wash water and then the contrast is perfectly. 
A uh, cool thing is also that uh, no special sample preparation is required, um, but it's important to work under clean conditions because we want to avoid contamination, as mentioned before, and uh, you want to know the data from the fiber or from the uh, fabric that is uh, produced during the washing and not from the contamination. Um, the research that we did also revealed that, for example, if you have a, a cotton polyester blend, um, <clears throat> roughly 90% of the fibers that we find in the wash water is actually of cotton nature and only roughly about 10% is actually <clears throat> polyester nature. So this is uh, roughly independent from the ratio or from the blend ratio of cotton polyester. You always find um, the major part is uh, cotton and the uh, minor part is polyester. We also pu published our uh, research activities and also the validation of the dynamic image analysis in, uh, in the journal called Water. Um, you can find it on the right side. And Hohenstein has also joined uh, the Microfiber Consortium in November last year. And in the Microfiber Consortium, basically, this is where uh, all the forces have joined to uh, fight the microplastic issues with the textile industry. So this is also a recommendation from our side to join Microfiber Consortium because this is actually where the buzz is going on right now. Um, all right, looking at the end of life, and now we talk about uh, terms like bio-based, compostable, and biodegradable. So first of all, we need to do a, a little myth busting. So basically bio-based is not the same as biodegradable and some biomaterials do biodegradate and surprisingly some also petrol-based materials do biodegradate. So what we need um, to take a look at is of course terms and definitions. So we do have bio-based, we have petrol-based, we have biodegradable and non-biodegradable. So starting um, at the very left top, so we have a bio-based material, which is non-biodegradable, that can be polyester, nylon 11, and ACC. So we have bio-based materials. This would be the box on the right side, which uh, are biodegradable. And this is PHB, PAE, and starch. Petrol-based biodegradable materials, they are definitely existing. Biodegradable petrol-based plastics, like PBS, PCL, and PES and non-biodegradable petrol-based um, fibers, which are polyethylene, polypropylene, and uh, polyethylene terephthalate, so basically the regular polyester, and this is what we're actually talking about when it's not biodegradable. Also, terms and definitions of bio-based, biodegradable, and compostable. There was a very nice article in uh, Ecotextile News, The Nature of Business. You can read the whole article if you want to know more. So we have extracted the main findings of the definition. So the definition for bio-based simply means that the product or material wholly or partly derived from biomass, such as plants, for example, trees, animals, um, the biomass may have undergone physical, chemical, or biological treatment. So this only tells you that the raw material that you used is bio-based. There's nothing about biodegradability or compostability. So the next term is biodegradable, which means that a substance or a compound is biodegradable if it can be decomposed by the action of microorganisms. So that is the clear definition of biodegradable. You may notice that there is no definition about time and conditions that the biodegradation needs to take place. Um, last but not least, we do have compostable, which means that a characteristic and a product of a material that allows it to biodegradate under specific conditions and produce good quality compost. These specific conditions are described in standards for industrial composting. So this is a very clear definition and it's also referring to a standard. So biodegradable is quite open right now, but compostable is pretty much fixed. So taking a look into biodegradation, what actually has a big influence or an impact on the biodegradation? Well, of course, the material. Uh, if you have non-biodegradable polymers, they just don't biodegradate. Uh, the construction of the material is quite important. As for biodegradation, the available surface area is very important. The more surface area the textile has, which is usually the case for knitted products um, in comparison to woven products, it actually works better. Of course, also the finishing has an impact uh, on the biodegradation. So undyed cotton uh, biodegradates very well, but as soon as you dye cotton and finish cotton, uh, it slows down the biodegradation quite, quite large. 
So we did some uh, pre-investigations for, for our services. So we evaluated some textiles in terms of biodegradation. So we assessed the qualitatively, visually, the mass loss and the ecotoxicology. So uh, you can see that uh, different fabric construction, different raw materials, the biodegradation varies from 100%, which is a total biodegradation. There's nothing left anymore uh, to 2%. And uh, actually what you would consider as polylactic acid sounds very natural and, and very biodegradable. Well, but the membrane that we tried to biodegradate um, didn't biodegradate at all. So um, in terms of that, uh, casein fibers and casein membranes, they, perf they, uh, they uh, biodegraded perfectly. And also certain cotton types, they also showed a very good biodegradation. So. Um, we think that the biodegradation should be assessed in a as close as possible real world scenario, so in a real environment. And this is basically what, what we offer. So um, we actually dig a hole in the ground, put the textiles in there, cover the textiles with soil, um, make it very reproducible and let the textiles sit there, out there in the environment for a certain time, which is at least three months. Uh, earlier is, uh, I think, not very reasonable. And uh, during these three months of time, microbes and microorganisms and small animals, they start to, uh, they start to work um, below the ground and uh, actually eat up or degradate uh, this cotton t-shirt, what we have in here right now. So this is actually live images uh, from, from samples that we excavated. So these are actually the real animals that, that do the job in degradating all the textile fibers. And well, after this uh, three months of limited time, if it works perfectly, the t-shirt is totally gone. So we uh, open the hole, we excavate uh, the textiles and clean them take them out, uh, take pictures, and of course determine the weight. You can see here the difference between the cotton fabric and the polyester sewing thread. Also the buttons and the rivets, they are, they are still there, of course. And also here you can see the difference between a polyester um, warp um, filament and uh, the weft was, of course, in cotton. All right, and this is the mass loss over a certain period of time, 100 days, polyester shirts almost zero. For uh, a cotton t-shirt, Baumwolle, this is in German, uh, quite high. And um, a denim pants, uh, kind of intermediate in between. So this gives you really cool data to communicate um, to your customers and also to the end consumer. All right, so this was basically the presentation. So Hohenstein is, of course, available for you worldwide. We're happy to talk to you anytime, and uh, please contact us if you have any questions to this presentation. Thank you for the opportunity, and have a nice day. Thank you.